Oh, hey, it's you. Uh, welcome back to the Black Pill. Let's talk about ideological diversity and Willow. But not Willow. All right, here's the quote. When I am weaker than you, I ask you for freedom, because that is according to your principles. When I'm stronger than you, I take away your freedom, because that is according to my principles. Uh, attributed to Willow? In another video, I don't remember which, I broke down sort of the... The, the, the weird and confusing origins of this quote. It's from a Frank Herbert novel in which he attributes this to Henri Boileau, who never demonstrably said or wrote this, but it's a useful quote nonetheless. Mm. This morning I read a paper in the American Association of University Professors publication about states trying to make professors apolitical. It's the same movement trying to erase any kind of nonconformity, gender nonconformity from K-12 ed, censoring history textbooks so that they don't mention slavery, sanitizing libraries of diversity, and killing the DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at colleges and universities. So this article's by Feldman and Yafard, 2024, uh, Inside Higher Ed. I'll try and remember to link, but, you know. They make the case that we shouldn't present both sides of every issue and leave students to decide. We should be very clear that Nazis are bad. I, for one, agree. We're experts not only in our course content, they say, but in analysis and argumentation. The case for Genesis is laughably weak. I should not teach biblical accounts of Noah's Ark alongside evolution in my psychology class. That would be a gross disservice. It isn't even, it isn't even worth mentioning that some people disagree with evolution. Some people think the world is flat. They don't deserve a mention in a plate tectonics class. These people are nothing to do with us. The preponderance of evidence, the preponderance of evidence supports one case, and that's not the case. We live in a democracy, and colleges are a liberal institution. Pretending to not know the difference between fascism and democracy would be intellectually dishonest. If psychologists broadly agree that LGBT plus people exist and ought to have rights and humane medical care, but right-wing pundits and politicians and church pastors disagree, it isn't difficult to determine who's right here. Uh, oh, who's to say? Well, I mean, the science is fairly clear at this point. Hmm. I'm to say. I'm to say. There are, at this time, pretty good and growing piles of data that support the former position, which is why academics hold that position. If Bill Maher wants to tour college campuses to shit on Islam, and we know his claims are broadly false as well as, as, well as harmful, are we obligated to hear him out, despite the violence he might leave in his wake? What if Ianopolis uh, comes by with an, with an anti-gay message, or Lisa Lippman, PhD, with some, some, some bullshit debunked theory about rapid onset gender dysphoria? We know the answers to these questions already. Why let Nazis come on, onto our campuses to ask them again? Freedom of speech is, of course, a spurious claim. The right often resorts to questions of freedom when in danger of being regulated for the good of all. Tobacco made secondhand smoke, a battle between harmless smokers and overreacting health nuts trying to limit the freedom of freedom-loving patriotic smokers. Have you ever heard the line, I still think the EPA cooked the books on secondhand smoke, for example? because that line was inserted into the public discourse by Big Tobacco. Colorado had a, Colorado had a wonderful commercial a few years back. Uh, what we did was we put a tax on sugary beverages at grocery stores. 
and uh, so 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 big corn syrup, I guess, or somebody. They ran this ad featuring a mother walking around, you know, the grocery store, putting two liters of pop in her cart and complaining that liberals were making it harder for her to feed her family. It's freedom. It's economic freedom. Uh, ch children, children, children don't need Coca-Cola. Mm. There we go. Ch children do not need high fructose corn syrup, um, which was the point of taxing soda. Right? Soda is a public harm. Children drinking soda is a public harm. Poor people are mostly the ones Poor and educated people are mostly the ones feeding their children soda, and then taxpayers pay for the for the for the health care of smokers and pop drinkers and alcoholics. So that's a public good. Bringing us back to Willow, or not Willow, as the case seems to turn out to be, the free speech the right wants is fascist speech, hate speech, the right to smear sexual minorities, Muslims, and whoever else makes a good scapegoat at the moment. But when they get the right to speak, they shout everyone else down. And when they get power, they limit free speech for everyone but their own supporters and colluders. Penn State and Harvard lost their presidents to a congressional hearing about anti-Semitism on campus and rising anti-Semitic violence. Ooh, that's rich. It's Republicans who campaign on free speech to keep Nazi speech free. It's because of right-wing groups that anti-Semites feel empowered to march in public, talk in public, carry tiki torches in public, and demand entry into the university quad in the first place. But when right-wing Israelis kill Muslims in a fairly obvious genocide at this point, something most Israelis have no interest in, and then anti-Semitic violence ticks up on college campuses, that's when Red Congress wants to know why we let Nazis talk. We let Nazis talk because you insisted that we do so. College professors may not be free to ask a student wearing swastikas to leave the class. It's never happened in my classroom, but I certainly have told my students that they have the right to be a Nazi but not to say anything a Nazi would believe, because those statements are, at worst, threats to other people, and at best, hate speech that causes a problematic working environment for other students. If it ever came to it, I'd probably be wrong on that. The U.S. Supreme Court, the one sitting now, would almost certainly find for the Nazis. But there is no moral principle that, consistently applied, requires or even allows for Nazis to steal free speech in this manner. There's no logical principle or empirical basis that supports the claims of Nazis and none that even require listening to those claims in the first place. This was all put to rest generations ago. Popper was right. Karl, not John. Karl Popper was right. Sometimes you have to I can't endorse, I can't endorse violence here. Let's don't say punch. What's a synonym for, for punch? Sometimes you have to caprison a Nazi right in the jaw. Sometimes you have to do that. Because when Nazis are allowed to speak, eventually only Nazis are allowed to speak. When the political right or the minority, when they are weak, they demand to be heard according to liberal values. But when they are in power, when they are strong, they silence opposition, disappear political opponents, and do away with free speech. I, for one, won't passively allow that to happen. And there's nothing I can do about it. Black Bill out.